dysmenorrhea is simply defined as chronic uh, cyclical pe pelvic pain, um, and it's almost always associated with menstruation. So the fact that it's menstrual pain, that's what makes it unique. It's a syndrome that's unique to women. So I'm actually really excited to see the women's health track this year because I think there are a lot of things that are very different about women and chronic pain that need to be emphasized at these conferences. So um, dysmenorrhea is really, um, it's very common. And the problem is that a lot of people think it's normal. They don't actually realize that for a significant percentage of women, so about almost 95% of women report having some pain during menstruation. And of those, about 25% have chronic, severe, debilitating pain. Um, and we actually classify that as a chronic pain syndrome. It's not normal. It causes a lot of physiologic changes, both in the body, in the periphery, and in the brain that are similar to other chronic pain syndromes. It causes as much dis disability as other chronic pain syndromes, and it affects us patients in our society just as much as any other chronic pain syndrome. But because it's a syndrome that's particular to women, you know, most primary care providers are not actually taught about that. Uh, and they're seeing women, so they have to know about these things. And so that's why I'm here. Yes, yeah, so what's unique about this menorrhea is that it starts very early in a woman's life. I mean, as soon as they start menstruating, which is the definition of primary dysmenorrhea, or it can start sometimes a little bit later after they've had a period of no pain, and that's secondary dysmenorrhea. Uh, in either case, dysmenorrhea is something that affects very young reproductive age women. So what happens when they're left untreated is they're essentially being sensitized. They're left untreated for a period, a lifetime, essentially, and that changes the way their uh, central nervous system works and uh, the way their central nervous system um, deals and with pain. And so I think that for, for me at least as a gynecologist, you know, I see the patients at the end of the spectrum, the ones that have been in pain for a long time and nobody seems to fix them. But dysmenorrhea is a unique syndrome in that we have the chance to intervene very early on. And so if we can teach providers to identify it when, it's, when it first comes on, we may actually be able to prevent these women from developing a uh, chronic pain syndrome, which is actually pretty unique. Uh, we don't have that opportunity for many other chronic pain syndromes, but we have that opportunity in this menorrhea. You know, unlike other chronic pain syndromes, this menorrhea is quite relatively easy to treat early on. Uh, we use a variety of NSAIDs, and there's at least 10 that I can think of that are available on the market now, FDA approved for use in, in menstrual pain. Um, then we also have um, suppression with oral contraceptives, and the trick there is to do complete suppression. In other words, uh, suppress menstruation fully and not allow patients to go through that cyclical period of pain, which can be done safely now, we know. I think a lot of people used to be worried about using hormones continuously in young women, but in dysmenorrhea, it can be done safely. We have um, the levonorgestrel IUD, which is an intrauterine device that can be inserted. In women who are older and they're done with childbearing, we can do um, endometrial ablations to stop menstruation. Um, we have GnRH agonists, which we can use to stop menstruation. And finally, for women who are in severe pain, um, they may be uh, amenable to surgical interventions such as a hysterectomy. So the beautiful thing about this menorrhea is that it's preventable and it's treatable. We just have to know about it. Well, what we're noticing now, even in dysmenorrhea patients, is that once they've been in pain for a very long time, they develop all of the characteristics of a chronic pain patient. There's a lot of biopsychosocial factors that go into that. Their mood changes, their coping abilities change, um, their entire life changes from being in pain. And those issues have to be addressed. And we know now that they're actually more uh, prone to other com comorbid pain syndromes. And so, to, to me, uh, it's absolutely natural to include dysmenorrhea in the same bio biopsychosocial model of pain management uh, as we do other pain syndromes and you know, not to shy away from it.